نور على مر الزمان تألقا وأضاء للدنيا طريقا مشرقا وهدى من الرحمن يهدينا به بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم brothers and sisters and welcome to our Sira lessons we are up to part number 10 where today, insha'Allah, we'll begin to discuss the hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Medina. Now, last week we spoke about how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned from Al-Ta'if and Isra' al-Mi'raj. Now, after this return from Al-Ta'if, he began to present himself to various tribes during the Hajj season. He was basically looking for somewhere to spread Islam, a home base for Islam, somewhere where the Muslims could go. Now, he would go to each tribe, and we're talking Arab tribes, who would come to Mecca during the Hajj season. Even he would go to certain market, markets, which were known, they were seasonal. He would go to them, and he would call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would ask them, he would ask the members of these tribes, who will protect me, who will help me, so, they, so that I could freely practice and convey the message of Islam. And in return, they will have Jannah. And during these visits, he would take Abu Bakr radiallahu an. So Abu Bakr, as we know, he was a specialist in the history of the Arabs family history and so on and so forth. So he would know uh, the tribes, he would know the strong tribes, the weak tribes, he would know the strong and weak elements of each tribe. But even when the Prophet ﷺ was calling still the enemies of Islam, Abu Lahab, his uncle, and even Abu Jahl would try and harm the Prophet ﷺ, would warn against him, would tell the other tribes about him. But the Prophet ﷺ persisted to call. He would call the people to worship Allah alone. He would tell and recite to them the Qur'an. Now, what was the response? In general, we can basically break up the responses of these tribes. We're saying this is around the 11th year after prophethood, the 12th year after prophethood. Generally, it was three types of responses. The first response was that of nothing, they wanted nothing to do with the Prophet ﷺ. We're free of you, we want nothing to do with you. The second response, some responded in a way where they said, we'll follow you as long as you, can, you make it a condition or that we are the leaders after you pass away. So they made a condition with their acceptance. And the third, they remained quiet. They didn't say anything. They didn't say this or didn't say that. Now, subhanAllah al azim during this, uh, we can say the 11th year, toward in the Hajj season, the Prophet ﷺ came across 12 pilgr uh, six pilgrims from Yathrib. And he sat with them and he spoke to them about Islam. Before we get and speak about this incident, what is Yathrib? Where is Yathrib? Who lives in Yathrib? Anyone tell me what Yathrib is or where Yathrib is? Or what was the name? Yathrib was the name of? Is the name of? Medina. Before the Prophet ﷺ named it Medina and now we only call it Medina. We don't call it Yathrib. But just for historical purposes in this lesson, who lived in Yathrib? Arab tribes. Two main tribes. Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj. Who are they? Where do they come from? They're pagan Arabs. And obviously, as the brother, one of the brothers just said, there was Jews as well. We'll speak about them later. And we've spoken about them in one of our introduction lessons, that there was Jews in Medina, in Yathrib, three main Jewish tribes. And we're going to get to them when we start discussing the Medina stage or the Medina phase of of the Prophet's mission Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But just concentrating on these Arabs from Yathrib. They were Aws and Al-Khazraj. 
Where did they originate from? Yemen. Yemen. And Aus and Al Khazraj were brothers. And they're descendants of a man called Al Harif bin Thalib bin Amr. And they are Pahtani Arabs, also known as the pure Arabs. They migrated from Mecca, uh, they migrated from Yemen to Medina. They were brothers, but subhanAllah al they started to fight amongst one another. So much so they were in constant fighting for about over a hundred years. And we're going to speak about some of their battles, which was, many say, happened in around the seventh year after prophethood, just a few years before this incident that took place. Now, Jabir radiallahu an, he describes, Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari, he describes the state we're in now, what happened now. So uh, this report is found in Muslim Imam Ahmad, and he says, radiallahu an, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in Mecca for 10 years, following the people to their homes, and to Uqav and Majanna. These are famous marketplaces. And to Mina during the seasons of Hajj. Saying all along, the Prophet ﷺ was saying to the people, Who will shelter me? Who will help me? So that I can convey the message of my Lord. And in return for that, for him accepting the Prophet ﷺ, sheltering him, who will help him in conveying the message, what will they get? Those who help him, they will have Jannah. They will have Jannah. Now, uh, Jabir continues to say uh, that a man would come from Yemen uh, and other places and the, he, the, his people would go to him and say, beware of this young man from Quraysh. Don't let him deceive you, warning against the Prophet wasallam. He would walk amongst his men and they would point to him, meaning to the Prophet wasallam, with their fingers. Beware of him. Don't let him deceive you. And Jabir said, and this situation continued until Allah sent us to him from Yathrib, meaning al Medina. From Medina to the Prophet. He said, Jabir, we provided him with shelter and we believed in him. A man from amongst us would go out to him in Mecca and believe in him. And he, meaning the Prophet, would teach him the Quran. That man would then return to his family who would embrace Islam because he embraced Islam and this continued until no house from the houses of Al-Ansar remained without having in it a group of Muslims who openly declared and practiced their Islam. So now the Aws and Khazraj, as we're going to discuss, become the Ansar, the helpers from Medina. Now, before we speak about these six pilgrims from Yathrib, a bit more about the history of Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj. Uh, as we said, they were living amongst the Jews. The Aws and Khazraj, they were pagan Arabs, originated from Yemen, pure Arabs, Qahtani Arabs. In the era before Islam, we said that they were always fighting. They were engaged in ongoing, ongoing conflict, as some reports mentioned, for over 120 years. And the Jews also played a role in this. Sometimes they would take sides, sometimes they would change sides, they would plan and plot and do this and do that. And we'll speak more about them and their role in Medina later on, inshallah. Now, there were many battles between Al Aws and Al Khazraj. As we said, they're originally brothers. Remember that. And one of the great battles they had one of the, was Yawm Bu'ath. And this happened in the seventh year. Of the prophetic mission and it's mentioned that the commanders the leaders of both sides basically were killed and the conclusion of this battle was indecisive they didn't win they didn't win but a truce was drawn up and it remained in force until the advent of Islam now as they mentioned it was an uneasy truce but they were they didn't want to fight they wanted a solution and subhanAllah al azim they even, it's mentioned that they had a king ready, as we're going to discuss when we speak about Medina, a king ready to rule them because they didn't want to fight anymore. And then look, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he ended their long, long enmity between one another, 
and turn them into brothers in Iman, brothers in Islam. Aisha describes this and the hikmah behind this. There's always a wisdom. Think about it. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just a few years before the Prophet sallallahu makes hijrah to Medina, basically a great battle happens between these two great tribes and all their main leaders die, were killed in battle. What's Allah doing? What's the wisdom? Let's see what Aisha said, radiallahu anha, as is found in Bukhari. She said, the day of Wa'ath was brought about by Allah for the good of his messenger. So that when Allah's messenger reached, reached meaning Medina, the tribes, meaning of Medina, had already divided and their chiefs, their leaders, had been killed and wounded, meaning injured. So Allah brought about the battle for the good of his messenger in order that they, meaning the Ansar, can embrace Islam. So Allah got Medina ready for the Prophet So, we said it's the 11th year. The Prophet ﷺ was walking and he came across, in Mina, he came across six pilgrims from Yathrib. The Prophet ﷺ said, Who are you? They replied, We belong to Khazraj. The Prophet ﷺ then asked, Allies of the Jews? They said, Yes. The Prophet ﷺ then said to them, Let us sit and talk. Now the Prophet ﷺ spoke to them about Islam recited the Qur'an upon them and invited them to believe in Allah alone, to worship Allah alone. La ilaha illallah. Now, these six men recognize the Prophet Sallallahu Who remembers why? What did the Jews used to do when they used to fight with them, with the Arabs of, of Medina? What did they used to threaten them with? Who remembers that soon a Prophet is going to be sent He's going to lead us Jews and that you Arabs will be slaughtered like the people of Ad and Iran. So they kept on warning them and threatening them. They were pagan Arabs. So now they knew this is the prophet the Jews were telling us about. So they recognized him. They said, this is the same prophet the Jews constantly threaten us with. Let us pledge allegiance to him before they do. All six men accepted Islam. And they said to the Prophet Sallallahu describing what we just spoke about, we left our people in such a plight. They were in a terrible situation, war and killing and death. If Allah unites us and division, they said, if Allah unites us through you, you would be honoured more than anyone else amongst us. They wanted to end this division, end this fighting. And they wanted a leader. So they accepted Islam they promised that they would invite their fellow tribesmen in Medina to Islam and they did that and they agreed that they would return the next year to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now they went back and they came the following year with a few more. Twelve in number, five from the previous year, from those six pilgrims from Yathrib and seven new ones. They came they met the Prophet Sallallahu and this came to be known as Bay'atul Aqaba Al-Ula. The first pledge of Al-Aqaba. Now, they met with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, became Muslim, they were all Muslim. So seven new ones, and they pledged allegiance and they agreed to do certain things. There are many reports, I'll mention one, and this is actually reported by one of them who you all know as Ubadat bin Samit radiallahu anhu, he was there and present amongst them. He said the Prophet sallallahu called us and we gave him the Pledge of Allegiance for Islam. And among the conditions on which he took the pledge from us is that we, we were to listen and obey the orders, both at the time when we are active and at the time when we are tired. Also, at a time of difficulty or a time of ease. And we are and to be obedient to the ruler and give him his right, even if he did not give us our right. And to not fight against him unless we notice him having open kufr, for which we would have a proof with us from Allah. This is mentioned in Bukhari. Another report also mentioned in Bukhari mentions another condition that we would stand for, firm. We would stand firm for the truth or say the truth, whatever it might be. And in the way of Allah, we would not be afraid of the blame of the blamers. Another condition mentioned that we will give loyalty and aid to the Prophet 
meaning when he comes to Medina, and we will protect the Prophet Sallallahu as we protect ourselves, our women, meaning our wives, and our children. Now these 12 went back. It's the 12th year after prophethood. And the Prophet Sallallahu sent with them Mus'ab bin Umair, radiyallahu an, as an, as an ambassador calling to Islam. He went back, he went to Medina Afan with him and started calling to Islam. So much so that Islam spread in every house. Everyone was speaking about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and speaking about Islam. And one of the ones that became Muslim at that time was Sa'ad bin Mu'adh, radiyallahu an, the leader of Banu Abdul Ashhal. One of the great tribes. He's one of the strong tribal leaders, so much so that after he became Muslim, through the hands of Mus'ab ibn Umair and others, he went to his tribe and said to them, Who am I amongst you? They said, You are our chief, the wisest amongst us. And he said, Promised by Allah that he will not speak to any of them unless they accept Islam. And subhanAllah, they all accepted Islam. And some reports mention, except one who became Muslim later on. They all became Muslim. Now, later on in the 13th year after prophethood, something came about called Bay'at al-Aqaba al-Thaniya, the second pledge of al-Aqaba. How many came? Over 70. Some reports mention 73 men and a few women, two women. They came to the Prophet wasallam amongst the pilgrims that came from Medina. Some reports mention there were over 500 pilgrims. The Muslims were amongst them and they didn't tell them. They went in secret to meet the Prophet وسلم, and they basically wanted the Prophet وسلم, to come to Medina. As some reports mention, they wanted to, they wanted the Prophet وسلم, amongst them and they wanted to protect the Prophet. Now, the Prophet وسلم, met them al aqabah during the days of Hajj once again. And Ka'b ibn Malik, who was amongst them, reported that they went out led by one of, those, one of their respected leaders, al Bara'u ibn Ma'rur, radiyallahu an. And they met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi secretly, who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi went out to meet them during the days of Tashriq in Dhul Hijjah, during the days of Hajj. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was accompanied by Abbas, his uncle. So, now, Abbas, he, he observed something. Now, Abbas, radiallahu an, he was a businessman. So he used to travel regularly to Medina. But when he looked upon the Ansar, the Muslims that came from Medina to do the bay'ah, the Pledge of Allegiance, he said, these people I do not know. They are new, which indicates most of them were young which says what we said before, that many of their leaders had died in that great battle we spoke about. So now, Abbas is with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they are meeting the 70-odd Ansar. Now they wanted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come to Medina and Allah hadn't given him permission yet as we're going to discuss the Hijrah. Now, Abbas, he basically wanted to be straight out and tell the Ansar, the Muslims of Yathrib, Medina, what they're, what they're getting themselves into. Now, regarding Abbas, many say he was not Muslim at the time, but he was very concerned about the Prophet ﷺ. He said, the Prophet ﷺ has both security and honor in Mecca. If you cannot guarantee to protect him in Yathrib, then let him remain in Mecca. Now their spokesman, as we said, Al-Bara, he spoke for the Muslims of Medina and he said, we are determined to offer our loyalty to the Prophet wasallam and sacrifice ourselves to him and we are willing to make this agreement to this effect, this allegiance, this bay'ah. Now the Prophet wasallam recited some verses of the Qur'an and had the men agree to the following Allegiance, the following oath or pledge. There, there are different reports. We we'll mentioned one that the Prophet Sallallahu told them that they have to agree that we will not worship none but Allah and we will not associate any partner with Him. Tawheed, Shahada. 
we will obey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will give our wealth freely in prosperity and in poverty during times of ease and hardship, we will counsel others to do good and instruct them to refrain from evil, call to the good, enjoin the good and forbid the evil, we will serve Allah even when others show disrespect and hatred, and we will protect the Prophet Sallallahu as we protect our women, our children, as we protect ourselves. And also some extra points that they will not uh, disobey those in authority. Now, Bara, he took the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu and said, I swear by the one who has sent you with the truth, we shall certainly protect you as we protect our own families. By Allah, we are sons of battle and weapons are our toys. This is what we have inherited from our ancestors. Now, there was one amongst them, Abu Haytham, who asked the Prophet Sallallahu a question. He said, O Prophet of Allah, we are bound, we are bound to an agreement with meaning with the Jews. And by pledging loyalty to by pledging loyalty to you, we will basically cut that off. We will be cut off, we will be basically cutting off all our old ties. If success comes to you and you should conquer Mecca, will you then return to Mecca and leave us defenseless? It's an important question he's asking. Prophet smiled and said, No. Blood is blood and destruction is destruction. I am of you and you are of me. I will wage war against those who make war upon you and be at peace with those who are at peace with you. So that was a clear answer. And when the Prophet ﷺ did conquer Mecca, what did he do? He went back to Medina. So he kept his word, وسلم, as we know he would. He is the truthful, the honest one. And Abbas once again told them, do you know what you're getting yourself into? And they agreed, yes, we know what we're getting ourselves into. And one of them asked, what do we get in exchange for all this O Messenger of Allah? Prophet ﷺ said, Jannah, paradise. In, in reality, my dear brothers and sisters, what a great victory it is for you to have paradise. When you serve Allah, serve the Messenger وسلم, by following him, following his sunnah, that's what they looked at. What do we get in exchange for all this? Jannah. Likewise, for worshipping Allah correctly, following the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, what do you get? Jannah. So they all gave, they got up and gave pledge to the Prophet وسلم, they gave the bay'ah, and the Prophet وسلم, appointed 12 chiefs from amongst them, 9 from Al-Khazraj and 3 from Al-Aws to be the leaders amongst them who would be responsible for the affairs of the community. Muslims are organized. Islam is an organized religion. And those who lead should be the most well-versed and experienced, not anybody and everybody. Now, subhanAllah, news started spreading to the Quraysh that this had happened. And this is massive, massive news now in Medina, in Mecca, Afwan. And the news spread to Medina, obviously. And it's mentioned in some reports that the Quraysh met up in Dar al Nadwa, where they meet and discuss certain issues, and they decided that we have to kill the Prophet. Now, the Prophet he was waiting to be given permission to do hijrah. The companions started doing hijrah. Now, why Medina? As we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose it for him. Allah chose Medina as the land of hijrah, migration for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are some reports which tell us why. Prophet sallallahu in one report said, I saw a dream, as is found in Bukhari and Muslim, that I was migrating from Mecca to a land in which there are date palms. And I thought that it was Al-Yamama or Hajr, but it turned out to be Medina, Yathrib. And he also said, I have been shown the land to which I will migrate. It has palm trees between two lava fields, the two stony tracks. And this is Medina. This is Medina, as it's found in Bukhari. Now, who migrated first from the companions before we speak about the Hijrah of the Prophet 
Al-Bara radiallahu an, he said the first ones who came to us from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa were Mus'ab bin Umayr radiallahu an and uh, Ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu an. Then, and they came and they taught them Islam, they taught them the Qur'an. Then Ammar, Bilal radiallahu an, Sa'ad, Nabi Waqqas, Umar radiallahu anhu came with 20 others. And obviously Abdullah, uh, Abu Salama was also was one of those who migrated early as well. Then uh, Bara continued to say, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and I never saw the people rejoice more than that. They rejoiced so much that I saw the girls and boys saying, هَذَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَدْ جَاءَ This is the messenger of Allah, he has come. We're going to speak about the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this report is found in Bukhari. Now, we're going to take the hijrah in brief. Now, the companions were migrating. The Prophet ﷺ was left in, in Mecca waiting for Allah to give him permission. And Aisha reports that in a dream, the Prophet ﷺ said, I have been shown your place of migration. He was speaking to the Muslims. A land of baked palm trees between two lava fields and two stony tracks. So some people migrated to Medina, as Aisha said, and most of those who had previously migrated to the land of Ethiopia returned to Medina. Abu Bakr also prepared to leave for Medina, but the Messenger of Allah said to him, wait for a while, because I hope that I will be allowed to migrate. So the Prophet wanted Abu Bakr to migrate with him. And Abu Bakr said to the Prophet do you indeed expect this? May my father be sacrificed. May my father be sacrificed for you. Prophet Sallallahu said, "Yes." So Abu Bakr stayed behind for the sake of Allah, uh, for the sake of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that he could accompany him uh, to Medina. He also fed two she camels he owned with the leaves of uh, Samur, uh, Samur Afwan. Um, and this is a, an excellent uh, feed or excellent food for uh, the camels. He fed him for four months on this, preparing him for the journey. So he's preparing. So one day, while we were sitting with, or while we were sitting in Abu Bakr's house, and it's obviously Aisha reporting, at noon, someone came and said to Abu Bakr, this is the messenger of Allah with his head covered, coming at a time at which he never used to visit us before. This is around noon time, Luhar time. Abu Bakr said, may my father and mother be sacrificed for him. By Allah, he has come at this hour. He has not come at this hour expect, except for something important. So him coming now at this time of noon when normally no one would come is for an important reason. So the Prophet ﷺ came and asked permission to enter, and he was allowed to enter, obviously. When he entered, he said to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, to everyone who is present with you to go away. Abu Bakr said, there is no one here but your family, a messenger of Allah. May my father be sacrificed for you, a messenger of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ then said, I have, been given, I have been given permission to migrate. Allah has given him permission to migrate. Abu Bakr said, said shall I come with you? Shall I accompany you? May my father be sacrificed for you, a messenger of Allah. Prophet ﷺ said, yes. Now imagine the joy of Abu Bakr now. He could barely withhold, he can barely hold himself at this. He was so happy. Radiallahu an. Abu Bakr then said, O messenger of Allah, may my father be sacrificed for you. Take one of these two she camels of mine. Now the Prophet ﷺ then said to him, I will accept it, but with payment. With payment. So Aisha she said, so we prepared the baggage quickly and put some journey food in the leather bag for them. Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, radiallahu an, cut a piece from her waist belt and tied the mouth of the leather bag with it. And, the, and for that reason, she was known as the owner of two belts. The owner of two belts. That in Nitaqaini. The owner of two belts, radiallahu Anha. Now, the Messenger of Allah took off 
with Abu Bakr. And instead of heading north, they went south. The normal way they would go to Medina is to go north, as a normal trade caravans would take, the normal travelers would take. But they went south to the mountain, to a mountain called Thawr, and they stayed in a cave there. Now, as the report mentions, that then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr reached a cave on the mountain of Athawr and stayed there for three nights. Abdullah bin Abi Bakr, who was an intelligent and wise youth, stayed with them overnight. He would leave them before daybreak so that in the morning he would be with the Quraysh as if he had spent the night in Mecca. He would keep in mind any plot made against them and when it became dark he would go out and inform them of it. Also, which shows you how organized this trip was. Abu Bakr had with him Amir bin Fuhair. And this was his freed slave. And he used to bring them basically the sheep so they can drink at night. So they always had fresh milk at night. And this was the milk of their sheep. Then Amir then would then take the flock away when it was still dark before daybreak. And he did the same for these three nights. They also hired a guide who was still a mushrik, Abdullah ibn Uraikit. But the Prophet Sallallahu and Abu Bakr trusted him and gave him their two sheep or their two uh, she camels and they made an appointment with him for him to bring their two she camels to the cave of the mountain of Athawr in the morning after the three nights had passed. So they told him, come after three days. And when they set out, Amir bin Fuhaira and the guide went along with them and the guide led them along the coast. They went along the coast. They didn't take the normal route that the normal travelers would take. Now the news spread. The Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr have left. So they put a bounty upon them. A bounty upon them uh, equal to their blood money. What was that? What was the blood money in to them, and what is still the blood money till today? A hundred camels. A hundred camels. Which was massive. Now, who heard of this? A man by the name of Suraka bin Malik. And Suraka heard this. Suraka heard about the reward, the bounty. So, it's mentioned that he left his house dragging the low end of his spear on the ground and keeping it low. He left quietly, didn't want anyone to see him. And he said, uh, he got on his horse, made a gallop, and he, he actually caught up to the Prophet ﷺ. And he said in his own words, when I approached them, in Muhammad Sallallahu and Abu Bakr, my horse stumbled and I fell down from it. Then I stood up got hold of my quiver and took out the divining arrows and drew lots as to whether I should harm them, meaning the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr, or not. And the lot which I disliked came out. They used to seek help in divining arrows. If it gives them this, they do something. If it gives them that, they didn't used to do it. Superstitions and omens. So when he done this, these divining arrows, these divine arrows, we can say, they told him not to go, but he went against it. You know, he wanted the blood money. He wanted the bounty half one. So he went against it, he said. He then said, I remounted my horse and let it gallop, giving no importance to the divining arrows, when I heard the recitation of the Quran by the Messenger of Allah, who was not looking around. Prophet ﷺ was looking straight. Well, Abu Bakr was looking around, worried for the Prophet ﷺ. And he kept doing that. Mentioned in some reports that Abu Bakr would look to the right, look to the left, look ahead, look behind, protecting the Prophet ﷺ, which shows you the status of Abu Bakr and how virtuous he is and the reward for his accompanying the Prophet ﷺ during the Hijrah, which was a very hard trip. It wasn't an easy trip. It was very, very hard. Now, Suraka then said that suddenly, as he was chasing once again, the four legs of my horse sank into the ground and I fell down from it. And then I rebuked it 
and it got up, but it could hardly lift its four legs from the ground. And when it stood up straight again, its four legs caused dust to rise up in the sky like smoke. So he, radiallahu he, an, as we just gave it away, that he becomes Muslim later on. So I was going to leave that to the end. But, alhamdulillah. So his horse once again fell down, he tried to get it up, it caused the massive, you know, smoke cloud, we can say. Then again, he said, I drew lots with the dividing arrows, and the lot which I disliked came out. So even his superstition, his omens here, are telling him not to go. His arrows are telling him not to go, but it is too, too, it was too hard for him to reject. Now he, he said, this is too much, I can't. Muhammad is aided by someone. So he said, I called to them to let them know that they were safe. They stopped and I remounted my horse and went to them. When I saw how I had been hampered from harming them, when I had been stopped from harming them, and what happened to me, it came to my mind that the cause of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, meaning Islam, would become victorious. So I said to him, your people have assigned a reward equal to the blood money for your capture. Then I told them all the plans that the people of Mecca had made concerning them. Then I offered them some, some, some food and goods, but the Prophet ﷺ refused. I did not ask for anything, but the Prophet ﷺ then said, do not tell others about us. Then I requested for him to write me a guarantee of safety. Suraka. So now, the one who was chasing now is seeking the safety and protection now. The Prophet ﷺ ordered Amir to write it for me on a piece of animal skin. And the Messenger of went on his way. And Suraka went back and he even saw some people, it's mentioned in some reports, and told them there's nothing here. There's nothing here to see. Prophet Sallallahu and Abu Bakr continued in their journey. Now, when the Prophet Sallallahu was in the cave, we forgot to mention that when he stayed in the cave for a few days, the Kuffar actually caught up to him and they were actually on the mountain. And Abu Bakr said to the Prophet Sallallahu as is mentioned in Bukhari, that if one of them looks down at his feet, he will see us. The Prophet Sallallahu then said, what do you think, o Abu Bakr, of two, the third of whom is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? And in Surah Al-Tawbah, what did Allah say? What did the Prophet Sallallahu say to Abu Bakr? لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Do not grieve, Abu Bakr. Do not be scared. Allah is with us. As is mentioned in Surah Tawbah, in a translation of the meaning, if you do not aid him, meaning the Prophet ﷺ, Allah has already aided him when those who disbelieved had driven him out of Mecca as one of two, meaning Abu, the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr, when they were in the cave and he, Muhammad ﷺ, said to his companion Abu Bakr, Meaning Abu Bakr, do not grieve, indeed Allah is with us. And Allah sent down his tranquility upon him and supported him with soldiers, meaning angels. You did not see and made the word, meaning their claims and slogans of those who disbelieved, the lowest, the, the most degraded and dishonest, while the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the highest and Allah is exalted in might and wise. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down on the Prophet sallam, tranquility, peace, and supported him with the angels, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They continued on their journey, and on this journey, the Prophet sallam, came across uh, Zubayr radiallahu an, and a caravan of Muslim merchants who were returning from Syria. Zubayr gave the Prophet sallam, and Abu Bakr a gift of white clothes. Now, when the Muslims of Medina heard the Prophet Sallallahu had left Mecca and he was heading towards Medina, they started going out every morning to meet the Prophet Sallallahu And they would wait there until it got too hot and it forced them to return. One day, after they were waiting a long while and they had, rent, they had went back home, it's mentioned that one of the Jews climbed upon the roof of one of the forts of his people to look for something. And who did he see? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companion 
dressed, I mean, Bakr, dressed in white clothes, as if they emerged out of a desert mirage. And he shouted at the top of his voice, O oh Arabs, O oh Arabs, he is your great man whom you have been waiting for. So all the Muslims, they rushed to pick up their weapons and went to meet the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stopped at the land of uh, Bani Amr bin Auf, and this was a Monday in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. Now, when the people started coming to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr stood up receiving the people while the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat down and kept silent. Now, some of the Ansar, uh, who, had came, who came out to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had not seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before. So they began actually greeting Abu Bakr, thinking he was the Prophet. But when the sunshine fell on the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Abu Bakr came forward and started to shield or shade the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his cloak, only then did the people realize that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, had come, and that, that, that was the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, Prophet Sallallahu stayed in the lands or the houses of Bani Amr bin Awf for 10 nights. And what did he do there? He established the Masjid of Quba, which was founded upon piety. Also, who heard he had come? His relatives from Banu Najjar. They came to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi as well. And they proceeded to Medina. To Medina. Now, as the Prophet ﷺ was coming in, it's mentioned that the women and men were on the rooftops while the kids were in the street saying, Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah. Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah. Other reports, other reports say, Ja'a Nabiullah, Ja'a Nabiullah, as is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. Other reports say, uh, uh, over f around 500 from the Ansar came to meet the Prophet Sallallahu saying, هذا رسول الله قد جاء هذا رسول الله This is the Messenger of Allah. He has come to us. And it was the best day for the people of Medina. The best day for the people of Medina, the happiest day was when the Prophet Sallallahu entered Medina. And the worst day for the people of Medina, as we're going to discuss, is when the Prophet Sallallahu passed away. Now, as we said, the Prophet Sallallahu stayed with Bani Amr bin Awf for 10 nights and he established the Masjid of Quba. Um, then the Messenger of Allah prayed in it and then mounted his sheikh camel and moved on, accompanied by the people, till his sheikh camel knelt down at the place of the mosque of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Now, it's mentioned that this place was where some Muslims used to pray in those days and that place was a yard for drying dates belonging to two orphan boys, Suhail and Sahel. And these two orphans were under the guardianship of As'ad bin Zurara. And when the Prophet Sallallahu camel knelt down, he said, this place, Allah willing, will be our place, meaning for the masjid. Then the two boys were called and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them to name a price for that yard, so he may take it as a masjid. The two boys said, no, but we will give it as a gift, a messenger of Allah. But the Prophet ﷺ refused to take it as a gift, and instead he bought it from them, and he built the masjid there, which became known as Masjid al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet ﷺ stayed with Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiyallahu an. This, in a nutshell, or this very quickly and very briefly, is the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ. As you just witnessed, it's very brief. There is much more we can discuss about the hijrah. But we'll leave it at that since this series is a brief series. With this, my dear brothers and sisters, we conclude the Meccan stage of the da'wah. Inshallah, when we resume our lessons about the seerah, we will start with the Medina stage of the da'wah. What did the Prophet ﷺ first do when he got to Medina? What did he establish? What did he build? As we just mentioned, who was in Medina and how he tried to make Medina وسلم, a place of peace for all those who lived there 
والله أعلم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بالله كم تستطب القروح ويبرأ جروح الكسير الجريح وينشط ذاك السقيم العليل وقد كان بالسكم دهرا طريق